Good day and welcome to the Pomerantz Mentor Series and today's vignette sponsored by ProScan Imaging Education Foundation is on the general approach to the coronal projection also known to many of you as the anteroposterior projection from your days of looking at conventional x-rays or radiographs. So let's get started and focus on the coronal because it's anatomic. You know, it's something that's, that's comfortable for all of us because we've been looking at this view on radiographs for so many years. We're going to look at the relationship between the radius and the ulna. Not the radial styloid, not the ulnar styloid, but the more central portions of these bones and their relationship to one another. We'll see in this and subsequent vignettes how variance changes the signal intensity of adjacent tissues in certain disease states and especially in certain impingement syndromes. Let's take our diagram of the coronal projection in which we see all of the bones of the carpus, the scaphoid, the lunate, the triquetrum, the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and the hamate, the triangular fibrocartilage and a few of its peripheral attachments, the ulno meniscus homolog, the extensor carpi ulnaris. This projection allows us to focus on the triangular fibrocartilage and some of the distal attachments some of the peripheral attachments, the relationship of the extensor carpi ulnaris to the capsule and subsheath, and specifically the relationship of the ulna to the radius and the ulna to the lunate, as might be affected in various abutment syndromes and degenerative triangular fibrocartilage tears. We'll assess the thickness of the fibrocartilage. We'll look for areas of perforation or fenestration, or tear, will characterize the shape and direction and complexity of the tear. We will be able to decide if these abnormalities are incidental, if they're developmental and incidental, or if they are traumatic and symptomatic. And we'll do that by shape, adjacent injuries, and the degree of inflammation that we see on magnetic resonance imaging, something we can't do very well with CT and can't do it all with x-ray. We also have a fairly reasonable view of the extensor carpi ulnaris and even though the axial is the preferred projection for the ECU, the long axis coronal can be an excellent supplementary sequence to look for partial thickness tears and tendinopathy. The coronal view is usually combined with a series of sequences that are fat weighted like the T1 and very heavily water weighted like the short time inversion recovery or STIR or the spectrally sensitive inversion recovery, the SPUR or the less water weighted but still water emphasized T2 weighted image. We use the coronal projection especially to look at the intrinsics, the scapholunate and the lunatotriquetral ligament. We look for areas of generalized synovitis, especially in these intervals, as indirect signs of laxity or failure, even in the absence of rupture, which can occur. We'll sometimes radial and ulnar deviate the hand or make a clenched fist view to emphasize the micro or macro instability of these areas. We'll focus on the homolog region, which is a filler area that helps connect various anatomic regions and boundaries. And we'll also look at the first carpo-metacarpal joint for alignment, for arthropathy, and for the beak ligament, a portion of the medial collateral first CMC stabilizer. As mentioned, one can do steep radial and ulnar deviation and clenched fist views. This helps augment the visualization and comparison of the position of the ulna relative to the distal radius. For on plane film, these should be within a few millimeters of each other. We'll look at the MR criteria for variance in the next vignette. 
But when the ulna is short and the radius sits more distal to it to a significant degree, this may place the patient at risk for Keenbox disease, also known as lunato necrosis. When the ulna is very short, it may abut into the radius and produce a scooped out erosion known as radio ulnar abutment. When the ulna protrudes distally or long, it may abut the lunate and produce a carved out erosion or osteoconval defect, thin the triangular fibrocartilage, perforate the triangular fibrocartilage, and separate the lunate from the triquetrum by fracturing or breaking the lunato triquetral ligament. And eventually, there is generalized degeneration of the carpal bones, a progression which is known as the palmar degenerative grading system for ulno lunate abutment and chronic degenerative TFC tears. This is the most common form of impingement, namely ulno lunate impingement, but we'll look at other forms of impingement, ulno triquetral, radial ulnar, and we'll examine the adjacent cartilage surfaces for various degrees of triquetral malacia or lunate chondromalacia or ulnar chondromalacia to help us decide the significance and importance of these abutment syndromes. Eventually, with instability and rupture of these intrinsic ligaments, destruction of the TFC, we may see scapholunate advanced collapse or a slack wrist where there is severe advanced degeneration of the carpal bones. A sign of this is hypertrophy of the radial styloid which is seen in the coronal projection. So in summary, we've reviewed how we examine the coronal projection by using a series of diagrams, emphasizing the need to evaluate the variance and relationship of the radius to the ulna. We introduced you to the progression of abutment syndromes and the types of abutment syndromes we're going to cover subsequently. Thanks and have a great day.